En unos segundos vas a escuchar una conversación completamente en inglés entre Camilo Gavir y yo, un comediante conocido de aquí, de Medellín, Colombia. Que va, qué belleza de cámara que le conseguí, vea. Y no vas a empezar a ladrar que no vas a dormir. Sí, está cómodo mi bebé. Sí, voy a poner una serie para que nos quedemos dormidos. Listo. Pégale pues para arriba que no ves para la venca. Al vez. Papi, sí está cómodo ahí. Está bien el aire. ¿Quiere escuchar musiquita? Ay, papi, el cinturón. ¿O quiere manejar usted? ¿Qué quiere mi bebé? Nació en uno de los barrios en la ciudad, nunca vivió afuera del país, nunca estudió en una escuela bilingüe y aún así logró ser 100% fluido en inglés totalmente por su cuenta y cambiar su vida para siempre. A medida que pase la conversación, voy a hacer pausas y explicar ciertas expresiones, verbos, palabras, etc. para que tú los puedas aprender. Y lo único que tienes que hacer es relajarte y disfrutar. Vas a tener la opción de activar subtítulos, tanto en español como en inglés, como tú prefieras, pero mi recomendación es tratar de desafiarte un poco. Empieza así sin subtítulos o coloca subtítulos en inglés. Y si hay alguna parte que no entiendes, puedes rebobinar y volver a ver esa parte con subtítulos en español. Si te gusta el video, no olvides darle un like y suscríbete al canal para que no pierdas futuros videos y para que me ayudes a mí en mi visión hacia un Latinoamérica donde no hay una sola persona que no hable inglés y donde todo el mundo tiene las mismas oportunidades para crecer en la vida. Yo soy Kale Anders, tu coach de inglés y tu sueco favorito. Let's go. Thank you so much, Camilo, for taking your time. And I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? How are you doing? How are you doing? Es una expresión para preguntar cómo estás. También podemos decir how's it going? O simplemente what's up? How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Sweet. I wanted to invite you here because I know that you are from Colombia and you have a, in my opinion, a perfect English. And I think that you're a very, very good inspiration for a lot of people out there who are also from here, who want to aspire to be fluent in English one day. So thank you so much for taking your time. Thank you for having me. You'll realize my English is, my English is not perfect. So you'll see. I'm fluent. You're I flu can understand everything. Yeah, you can understand everything and you can speak fluently. Yeah. That's all you need, right? Communication is the key. Exactly. It's the main thing yeah. you need. Communication is key. Es una expresión. Es lo mismo que decir que algo es clave. Clave y llave es la misma cosa en inglés. Key puede ser la llave, pero también puede ser la clave. Communication is the key. Exactly. The main thing yeah. you need. Tell me or tell us. So, who are you and what do you do? What do you do? Es una expresión súper común en inglés para preguntar qué haces de trabajo. ¿A qué te dedicas? What do you do? O más rápido, what do you do? Tell me or tell us. So, who are you and what do you do? All right, so my name is Camilo Gaviria. I am a content creator, so I shoot comedy stuff. I shoot comedy stuff. Shoot se puede hacer con una pistola, pero también con una cámara. Y stuff es una palabra para decir cosas. Yo grabo cosas de comedia. So I shoot comedy stuff for Instagram, social media, Instagram, Facebook, yeah, YouTube and stuff. That's basically... How did you get started with that? How did you get started? ¿Cómo empezaste con esto? En inglés, para hacer preguntas, usamos lo que se llama los verbos auxiliares. Y uno de esos verbos es el do. Probablemente has visto ese verbo un millón de veces. Do you like? ¿Te gusta? How do you get started? ¿Cómo empiezas? Y en el pasado, simplemente conjugamos ese verbo auxiliar, el do. Entonces decimos did. How did you get started? ¿Cómo empezaste? En lugar de ¿cómo empiezas? How did you get started with that? So, um, I was inspired by some American comedians. By that time, th there was a, a platform called Vine. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, of course. It was about, it was like a six seconds uh, platform. Yeah. So you you'd have to make somebody laugh in six seconds. Something yeah. like sick. Yeah. So I started watching, uh, you know, Amanda Cerny, uh, King Bash, yeah. and guys like that. And so I was like, I want to do that. Yeah. And I think I can do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. Quiero hacer eso. En conversaciones cotidianas, es súper común que decimos I wanna en lugar de I want to. Y eso es algo que vas a notar con los nativos de inglés que cortan todas las palabras, comen muchas letras para que puedan hablar más rápido. I wanna do. Quiero hacer. I want to do that. Yeah. And I think I can do that. Yeah. So like, 
Right. So I started like shooting these videos at, at the beginning was like really tough because I was, I had never been exposed to the world in that way. Yeah. I had never been exposed. Nunca había sido expuesto. Este es el tiempo gramatical más avanzado en inglés. El pasado perfecto. El past perfect, como decimos. I had never been exposed. Yo nunca había sido expuesto. I had never been exposed to the world in that way. Yeah. So that was such a big challenge, but somehow I managed to like keep going with it. Did you, get, did you get traction on Vine? Like, did you become famous on Vine? Escuchas nuevamente cómo estoy usando ese verbo auxiliar do para hacer preguntas. Did you get traction? Eso significa tuviste tracción o tuviste éxito en esa plataforma. Nuevamente, usamos este verbo auxiliar para hacer preguntas. Do you get traction? ¿Tienes tracción o tienes éxito? En el pasado, did you get traction? Did you get traction on Vine? Like, did you become famous on Vine? Or was it until you moved to Instagram? Or when did it, like... The funny thing is that when I decided to get started, um, Vine disappeared. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was took over by Instagram. Yeah. Aquí cometió un error. Él dijo, it was took over. Decimos, it was taken over. It was taken over. Fue tomado por Instagram. O fue ganado por Instagram. Entonces todo el mundo dejó de usar esa plataforma Vine y empezó a usar Instagram. Entonces decimos it was taken over by fue ganado o competido por Instagram. Yeah, because it was took over by Instagram. Yeah. Because by that, you know, by that time Instagram was more focused on like uh, pictures. Pictures, yeah. So I started like putting up my videos on Instagram. Yeah. And uh, until it kicked in, I mean... Kick in es una expresión muy típica en inglés que significa empezar de verdad until it kicked in hasta que empezó de verdad until it kicked in I mean probably like I don't know a few videos went viral yeah so I was like all right this is my thing yeah back then I was um, I was an, a Spanish teacher oh yeah so I was teaching Spanish to foreigners who were here in Medellin and I did that for like mm. eight years but I was already like a bit uh, bored of doing the same thing or like yeah yeah um, so yeah, when, once I discovered like these social media worlds, I fell in love with it. Yeah. And so here I am. Have you ever lived abroad? Have you ever lived abroad? ¿Alguna vez has vivido afuera de tu país? Abroad es una palabra que significa afuera del país. Have you ever lived abroad? ¿Alguna vez has vivido fuera del país? Have you ever lived abroad? Never. Never. And you speak this good English. That's impressive. When I was a child, I realized that I had to learn English. Él decía, I had to learn English. Eso significa yo tenía que aprender inglés. Aquí estamos usando la expresión have to, tener que. En el pasado, had to. I had to learn English. Tenía que aprender inglés. I had to learn English. Yeah. I didn't know why, but I just, I just, knew I had to yeah. because um, I, I wanted to like get to know all the cultures so I yeah. was I would like be watching TV and I would see like all these different cultures and I, I was like I, I want to talk to the world yeah so I would be like as a child I would be like sitting in front of a TV yeah I would be I would do I would go. Aquí Camilo está usando el tiempo gramatical condicional. En español este tiempo también existe. Todas las palabras que son haría, iría, jugaría, caminaría, todas las palabras que terminan con ría es el tiempo verbal condicional. En inglés usamos el verbo de ayuda, el verbo auxiliar would. I would go, iría. I would do, haría. I would run, correría, por ejemplo. So I would be like, as a child, I would be like sitting in front of a TV. Yeah. For some reason, back then there was like a TV channel that was like all in English. Yeah. I used to live like in a slum. The slum is una palabra en inglés que significa un barrio muy, 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 muy pobre. The slum. I used to live like in a slum. Oh, really? Don't know how we had like that TV channel in English. <laughs> I would like sit in front of the TV. I would like watch movies in english yeah no subtitles like i was like eight or nine wow my family would be like what are you doing <laughs> you, you don't understand anything yeah but i'd be like i don't care 
I I know something is gonna stick in my mind. Yeah. So this is how I'm gonna train my mind to yeah. learn the language. I want, I really wanted to learn English, and so I started using this. We we used to have like dictionary, like a yellow dictionary, Chicago something dictionary. Yeah. And I used to like use it all the time to learn vocabulary and stuff. Yeah. Like the old way. Yeah. And uh, so I started learning. Then I uh, there was a platform back then. There was a platform back then. There was es una expresión que significa había. There was. Y este es el pasado de there is. Hay. Entonces, en español decimos hay y en pasado había. There was a platform. Había una plataforma. There was a platform back then uh, when we had when we finally got access to the internet and so I had the opportunity to chat with people from around the world and so that's when I started like learning wow but I think yes it was self-taught so you're completely self-taught basically yeah self-taught taught es el pasado del verbo teach enseñar y cuando tú eres una persona self-taught eres una persona autodidacta que te enseñó a ti mismo but I think yes it was self-taught so you're Completely self-taught, basically. Yeah, yeah, because when you go to like a public high school, you yeah. don't. Learn you went anything. to a public high school. Yeah, yeah. So you basically learn how to conjugate the verb to be. Yeah, exactly. And you're not going to be able to engage in conversation just by knowing the verb to be. No, no it's not going to happen. Exactly. A lot of people think that as a Latin American l living in Latin America, you either have to go abroad, live somewhere else, and communicate with the people every day, study or pay a lot of money to go to some good private school where they have good English classes. Which I didn't have, by then. <laughs> exactly. Yo estaba diciendo que mucha gente piensa que para aprender inglés tiene que mudarse y vivir afuera, abroad, o tener mucho dinero para estudiar en una escuela bilingüe. Y ahí Camilo dijo, which I didn't have. Lo cual yo no tenía. Which classes. I didn't have, by then. <laughs> exactly. And here you are, speaking amazing English. Fantastic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, I, I um started uh, doing couch surfing yeah well I explain couch surfing to the people so couch surfing it's basically yeah, like a site and you can travel the world without like paying for your stay you can just like talk to some like request to stay at somebody's uh, couch yep and then you can just like do it for free yeah ah oh, it's free it's free yeah oh, okay. you don't have to, yeah that's the thing like you exchange wow well, well, you have people over i had these people over in english cuando dices i have someone over significa que tienes a alguien en tu casa over hacia acá over significa arriba o encima pero también hacia acá cuando tú dices en inglés i had someone over eso quiere decir que tenías alguien de visita en tu casa you have people over And they buy groceries and stuff. Yeah, some they, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> some of them. <laughs> and then, so the thing is that it's gonna be like the other way around. If you yeah. decide to go out, yeah. to go out, to go abroad, and then if you want to do it, as well, I tried to do it once in Brazil. I just, I never did it. Yeah. I only hosted people at my place. Yeah. But that was really good for me because I had the the opportunity to like practice my English. Yeah. Because I had like these people who didn't speak a word of of Spanish, so I would have I would have them like yeah over and I would like speak to them in English all the time. That's how I think that's how I started to started to really become fluent. Yeah, and then I started like living like sharing apartments with a whole bunch of people. Yeah, entonces Camilo empezó haciendo algo que se llama couch surfing, couch sofa, surfing surfiando surfeando sofás. Eso es un concepto, no sé si lo conoces, pero es muy chévere y de pronto es algo que quieres considerar para tu aprendizaje de inglés. Es que hay una página donde personas que tienen un sofá en su casa dejan que otras personas extranjeros, mochileros, puedan dormir en ese sofá en sus viajes gratis. Y a veces simplemente aportan con comida o limpian o lavan o cocinan o algo así en la casa algunos días. Y Camilo hacía justamente eso. Y de esa forma fue capaz de conectarse con mucha gente extranjera y practicar su inglés. And then I started like living, like sharing apartments with a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Here and there in Medellin and so I would live with people from Australia, from Ireland, uh, England. It, is that why you have a little bit of an Australian accent? I had a... Why do you have that? Why do you have that? ¿Por qué tienes eso? 
Why do you have an Australian accent? ¿Por qué tienes un acento australiano? Camilo tiene un poquito de acento australiano y no entendí por qué. Y aquí vamos a descubrirlo. Is that why you have a little bit of an Australian accent? I had a... I, do you have that? <laughs> so I, I have a lot of, Amer of um, Australian friends. Yeah. Um, we get on quite well. I don't know yeah. why. Their sense of Aust humor around... Aussies are awesome. Aussies se llaman los australianos en inglés. Aussies. Y son buenísima onda los australianos. Entonces, los mejores amigos de Camilo eran de Australia. Entonces, él consumía ese acento australiano todos los días. Y esos patrones, ese, ese acento se interiorizó. Y por eso, ahora tiene un acento más australiano que de pronto americano o inglés cuando habla. Causa y efecto. Si quieres tener un acento australiano, escucha muchísimo inglés australiano. Así es como funciona. Aussies are awesome. They are. I lived in Australia oh. for a year and a half. It was awesome. Yeah, so I had a lot of friends from, you know, like all these countries. So I think that's how I got like, yeah, my accent. It's like a mixture of everything. I, yeah. I used to hang out as well with a girl yeah. from, from England. Yeah. El acento inglés y el acento australiano son muy parecidos. Entonces, como él estaba alrededor de gente de Inglaterra y Australia, aprendió ese acento más que todo, en lugar del acento americano, que es el que yo tengo, por ejemplo. I used to hang out as well with a girl yeah. from, from England. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Something I knew was that I had to get rid of my, my accent in Spanish. Yeah. To get rid of. Para deshacerse de. I had to. Nuevamente, tenía que get rid of my accent in Spanish. Yo tenía que deshacerme de mi acento en español. I had to get rid of my, my accent in Spanish. Yeah. I love how we speak in Spanish. I yeah. love my accent in Spanish. Yeah. I hate how it sounds in English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I had to get rid of it. I kind of like the Paisa accent in English. English is, oh. Hello, how are you? I like you very much. No. You're so cute. <laughs> Mom, how are you, Mom? Baby. <laughs> no? Uh, no, not okay. me. Okay. I don't really like how it sounds. So I, I, I knew I had to change it. I didn't want to sound like that. Yeah. So I tried to... Oh, and I used to listen to a lot of um, BBC podcasts yeah. as well. Yeah. BBC creo que es originalmente una estación de radio en Inglaterra. Entonces, él escuchaba muchos podcasts de BBC. Y nuevamente, por escuchar tanto inglés británico, logró aprender ese acento. I used to listen to a lot of um, BBC podcasts yeah. as well. Yeah. Because for me, like, that English was pretty accurate. Yeah. Very articulate. Pre yeah, and mm. pretty clear to understand. Yeah. So I think that's how I yeah. kind of got this section as well. Any, any, like, cultural problems? or misunderstandings or embarrassments um, living with your girlfriend, maybe? I mean, in my case, I've done 50, like more than, I've done so many mistakes speaking Spanish. I said to a girl's mom that estoy caliente when I wanted to say tengo calor. Uh, that was embarrassing. I told an entire Mexican family that their best football player está buenísimo when I wanted to say es buenísimo. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that one is tricky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star, ser, star. Any, any, any experiences like that that you can recall? To recall es un verbo, no quiero decir avanzado, pero de pronto no tan usado en día a día. To recall, para recordarse de. Do you recall any cultural, do you recall any situations like that? ¿Te acuerdas de algunas situaciones así? Incómodas con el choque cultural. Any experiences like that that you can recall and you Okay. So I knew I had to, I I also knew when I was a child that I knew I had to learn English because it you like open a lot of opportunities for me eventually, yeah. you know, in the future. So yeah. it um I started like working at a call center. Mm. For uh, yeah, I was like making calls to Canada all the time. It was, like, to Canadian customers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sucked. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad, like and they were like, Where are you calling from? England? London or Sydney. Well, <laughs> then back then, my well, I mean, my English was like really, I mean, it wasn't as good as it is now. Yeah. So I would struggle to understand like people on the phone because that's like something like that's another level. Yeah. Understanding someone on the phone. Yeah. And understanding uh, humor. Yeah. I think that's like, yeah, the top. 
Exactly. And telling stories in the past tense. Exactly. It's really hard to. Very hard to. Yeah. So <laughs> you're going to need to censor this bit, but so I was talking to someone on the phone from Canada and so I tr I was trying to, 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 to explain to her that she needed to like, like put a piece of paper yeah. on the, on the bag. Yeah. Whatever. For, because it was about donations and stuff. Yeah. So. <laughs> So sometimes you confuse words, you yeah. Know, that happens to you in Spain. Yeah. So I said to her, because she said, "Well, how how do I like if the she needed to mark yeah the bag?" And she said, "Well, if the bag is black, how do I mark?" I said, "You should stick a piece of shit in it." <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say to say shit, like uh, place a piece of paper. Uh, yeah. I should have said paper. Ah, uh, instead uh, I said like. <laughs> Sort of shit. <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, and then I, and she's like, ah, oh, I figure out. And she hang up on me. Um, and I'm like, oh, oh my god. Oh, my, well, I mean, that's embarrassing. Yeah. Oh, he was. <laughs> and then I started like telling him, well, I never played with him, laughing at me. Yeah. I'm like, all right. Yeah. This happens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, right? Those Some words are very confusing. One of them I'll pronounce, the other one I won't, because you might know which one it is. Yeah. Can't. Yeah. And the other one, I used to confuse them both. Yeah, I used to, like especially with an with a British accent or American or Australian accent, they're very similar. Exactly. Yeah. Entonces en inglés muchas veces es muy importante que puedas separar ciertas palabras cuando las pronuncias. Por ejemplo, beach y bitch. y en este caso can't, no puedo y can't. ¿Qué significa? Que es la parte eh, abajo de la mujer. Que Obviamente, en todos los países y en todos los idiomas es una grosería decir esa palabra, ¿cierto? Y el problema es que cuando hablas con un acento más británico, no dices can't como no puedo, sino dices can't. I can't. Esa es la diferencia entre esos dos acentos, el inglés y el americano. Y el can't suena muy similar a que es que es esa palabra fea. So, in American English it's like can't. So yeah. it's very far away from cut. <laughs> yeah, cut that, that out as yeah. well. <laughs> so now I I know I can say can't. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Cannot. Exactly. Can't. Exactly. I was always afraid of saying can't <laughs> because I would sound like I, I'm See, sorry, but it still kind of it, it still kind of sounds like No, if you can extend it a little bit more and then yeah. it's not gonna sound like that. Yeah. But, well <laughs> I usually like I can't do it. <laughs> In the end of it too. Yeah, uh, it's funny. Yeah. What tips do you have for other Latin Americans listening to this? Like, who want to learn English, who might be starting from zero or from a very basic level and they see you and they hear you and they're inspired by your story. Like, what, what tips or what advice would you give to them? In terms of uh, learning English? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Life advice we can do later. Yeah, you, the, if they can find life advice on, on his social media channels. That uh, too, yeah. I'll, I'll, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I've come across a lot of people who say to me, like, yeah, I want to learn English. I come across a lot of people. To come across es una expresión en inglés que significa encontrarse con. I come across a lot of people. Yo me encuentro con muchas personas que... I've come across a lot of people who say to me like yeah i want to learn english yeah but then they go to the movies and they watch it all in spanish yeah. i'm like bro you're not gonna let learn that way no you gotta if you like one useful tool that i used back then was watching movies in english with subtitles in english as yeah. well because that's gonna train your ear because you're gonna be listening like you're gonna be listening to them and at the same time you're going to read and it's all about association you don't need to even know the meaning of that word, but you just need to at first learn, associate the pronunciation with the written word. I think that's a very good way to learn. Yeah. Um, try to engage in conversations in English as much as you can. Yeah. Whenever you have the, uh, an opportunity, if you yeah. like, if you go out, you see a, a gringo passing by, go talk to him. Yeah. If you see a gringo passing by, go talk to him. Acaba de decir Camilo. Pass by significa pasar. If you see a gringo passing by, 
si ves a un gringo pasando. Háblale. You see a, a gringo passing by, go talk to him. Yeah. So <laughs> that's like something that. you have to know. Yeah. That, that you have to do. Yeah. Just like, because that's that's scary sometimes. Yeah. Like when someone comes to you and speaks to you in English. Yeah. Like I used to be like, like I used to freak out. Yeah. Especially when I was talking like English in groups. Exactly. It's different if I'm talking to to you right now. It's just yeah. one person who's going to um, listen to my mistakes. Yeah. But if I am in a group, yeah, speaking to them, yeah, I will like remain silent, yeah, because I was afraid of making mistakes, yeah. which is a big mistake. El decía, I was afraid of making mistakes, which was a big mistake. Tenía miedo de cometer errores, lo cual era un gran error. Because I was afraid of making mistakes, yeah. which is a big mistake. Yes. You don't, you don't have to be afraid of making mistakes. We all make mistake, mistakes in many other aspects of life. So yes. When, when learning a language, you got to make mistakes in order to correct them. Yeah. And, and learn how to yeah. speak properly. Like another tool that's very useful is music. Yeah. You know, because you can like spend your whole life like mumbling a, a song. Yeah. Know, eh. yeah. But if you actually learn the lyrics, it's going to be better. And at the same time, you're going to learn the language. So that's yeah. a very useful tool I used back then. Um, when listening to music in English, try to try to listen as many songs in English as you can. Yeah. And read the lyrics and learn them. Because yeah. that's a good way of learning um, yeah. vocabulary as well and training your ear as well. So exactly. That's something else I used. Man, Bye. thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for taking your time. I really appreciate it for having me. It's been fun. Yeah. And I hope uh, I get to inspire some other people to like, I'm go sure. ahead and, and learn. I'm sure you definitely did. Thanks, man. Thank you. Bye. All right. ¿Qué tan cool estuvo eso? Camilo aprendió inglés sin estudiar en una escuela bilingüe, sin mudarse a vivir en Estados Unidos, por su cuenta, y logró ser 100% fluido. Mira, de pronto no tiene la pronunciación más perfecta, pero habla completamente fluido y entiende todo. Entonces, si él lo pudo hacer, tú también lo puedes hacer. Espero que este video y esta entrevista te haya motivado para seguir adelante con tu inglés y que te des cuenta que nunca es tarde y tú tienes toda la capacidad para lograrlo si tienes un interés genuino en aprender el idioma. Así que cuéntame por favor aquí abajo en los comentarios cómo te fue. ¿Entendiste bien la conversación? ¿Te gusta este estilo de entrevistas y explicaciones como parte de tu aprendizaje? Me encantaría escucharte. Déjame saber tu comentario aquí abajo. Y si te gusta, de pronto tienes algunos invitados que te gustaría que entrevistara yo. Cuéntame también aquí abajo en los comentarios. Si te gustó el video, no olvides darme un like y suscríbete al canal para que no pierdas futuros videos y para ayudarme a mí en mi visión hacia un Latinoamérica donde no hay una sola persona que no hable inglés y que todo el mundo tiene las mismas oportunidades de crecer en la vida. Muchísimas gracias por tu tiempo. Nos vemos en el siguiente.